panelists um, have really done a good job of putting this together. Um, so, Chavez and Nuevo Cristo, the aesthetics of popular religion in Venezuela from Chavez de Maduro. Um, if you permit me. Uh, our Chavez who art in heaven, the earth, the sea, and we delegates, how would be your name? May your legacy come to us so we can spread it to people here and elsewhere. Give us your light to guide us every day. Lead us not to te into the temptation of capitalism. Deliver us from the evil of the oligarchy, like the crime of contraband, because ours is the homeland of peace and life forever and ever. Amen. Viva Chavez. So, so reads the Chavez Nuestro prayer that Maria Estrella Uribe, uh, the, the lady here, a delegate of the Venezuela Socialist Party, prayed earlier this month at a party conference. Some may be shocked at the apparent blasphemy of replacing God with Venezuela's former president in what many consider the holiest prayer in Christianity. Others, however, will recognize how this rhetoric belongs to a politicization of religious language and imagery that not only was deftly employed by Hugo Chavez and inherited by Nicolas Maduro, but has a long-standing tradition in Venezuelan political discourse dating back to Simón Bolívar himself. Falling under, the latter, uh, following, falling under the latter interpretation, this paper explores the aesthetics of popular religion that have both reflected and created the proponent, uh, that have both been reflected in and created by the proponents of the so-called Bolivarian Revolution, with a focus on its manifestations under Chavez and most recently under Maduro. I am interested in describing the mediation of a Chavez Christology, whereby Chavez and his legacy are baptized with Christological significance in the media for the advancement of the Bolivarian Revolution. So here there, there was some overlap with your work, Isaac. This paper is divided into two parts. Uh, first, I propose a chronology for un understanding the evolution of Chavez Christology from Chavez to Maduro. Second, I offer some brief reflections on the theological premises of this Christology. Um, hopefully, some, some of this terminology is specific to theology, um, but Christology here is just a description of um, <coughs> the central doctrines uh, uh, of Christ. So whether that's the two natures of Christ, uh, his relation to the Trinity, just the, that's the kind of classical term in theology used to describe this kind of category. So, um, three key phases. I've, I've just identified three key phases. Um, in establishing a chronology of the critical junctures in the aesthetic construction of Chavez as a Christ figure in the media, one can discern three key phases. Foundations from 1999 to 2010, illness from 2011 to 2013, especially 2011, and death and its repercussions, March 5th, 2013, and um, its repercussions today. These periods saw a gradual intensification of Christological iconography punctured by strategic political moments until it was secured for effective post-mortem deployment. From the beginning of his tenure as president, Chavez infused his discourse with Christological imagery and mythology. Already in 2000, Alex Capriles complained in El Universal of the apocalyptic tenor of Chavez's presidency, noting, his continued allusions to mythical themes, the eagle and the serpent, the apocalypse, demons. Another El Universal columnist, Oscar Yanis, echoed this concern for a spiritist government which was taking its political cues from beyond the grave. This growing nervousness over Chavez's religious language is perhaps best encapsulated by Jose Pedro Suquete's 2008 article, The Missionary Politics of Hugo Chavez. He argues that the success of Chavez's populist leadership stems largely from its early soteriological dimensions. Among the many ways Chavez promoted the messianic mythology was in portraying his revolutionary project as endorsed by Jesus Christ himself. In 2003, Chavez stated, we are building a true democratic state of justice and law. And I'm happy and I praise God, my Lord, Christ, my redeemer, Christ our father, Christ the one who came to our world to fight for justice and to defend those who are oppressed and the vulnerable. And I praise the Lord because he has allowed me, with these hands, these peasant hands, these hands of a soldier, to finally start making justice. As Sukita summarizes, Chavez establishes a, par a parallel between the life and mission of Christ and the Bolivarian mission that Chavez has launched in contemporary Venezuela. Even from this beginning period, Chavez <coughs> equated his struggle against American imperialism with Christ's struggle for the poor. Accordingly, Chavez named his social programs Christ's Mission, citing how they imitated Christ's calling to eradicate poverty and enable equality. 
Moreover, as Sukkot denotes, Chavez's apocalyptic vision was one of realizing the kingdom of God on earth and inaugurating a new era of human flourishing. In speaking of the world to come in 2003, Chavez claimed, we are headed toward the beautiful homeland. This is our path and no one can stop us. We have God on our side so that the kingdom of God that Christ announced may turn into a reality, but here on earth, not anywhere else. According to this model of salvation, all poverty and misery would be eradicated by 2021 in Venezuela. Thus, Chavez began to lay these Christological foundations from the beginning of his presidency, equating his fight for the Bolivarian Revolution as the fight of Christ, the Redeemer of peoples. The second phase encompassing Chavez's public battle with cancer contained a spate of significant appeals to Christ. In an address from Havana in July 2011, after a second major operation to remove a cancerous tumor, Chavez quoted from the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes and reflected upon the theme of vanity and fearing God. Allusions to Christ were sandwiched with other religious and myth mystical figures as Chavez called for help to my Lord Jesus, to God, the God of my fathers, as Bolivar would say, to the cloak of the Virgin, as my mother Elena would have said, to the spirits of the Savannah. Equally, he expressed gratitude to a generic almighty, stating, thank you God, thank you my people, thank you my life, to victory. Chavez's appeal to Christ in particular came during a dramatic televised mass in April 2012, which you alluded to, following further sessions of cancer treatment in Cuba. As Chavez's health worsened leading up to a presidential election on October 7th that year, Chavez wept and called on Christ to spare him. He prayed, give me your crown, Jesus, give me your cross, your thorns so that I may bleed, but give me life because I have more to do for this country and for these people, do not take me yet. Strictly speaking, these statements don't relate to the Christ, -making, uh, Christ myth making, but to the attendant and nonetheless necessary establishment of a personal relationship between Chavez and Christ. While this may have helped to dispel doubts about the genuineness of his religious devotion, it definitely garnered, garnered more media attention than his previous Christological pronouncements. One can assert then that the second phase proved primordial in solidifying the Chavez Christ typology initiated in the first year, in the first years of his presidency. The third and perhaps most important phase of Chavez Christology occurred during and succeeding El Comandante's death in March 2013. This entailed two interrelated narratives. First, efforts were made to secure Chavez's legacy as a Christian in the media. Roman Catholic leaders in particular came out in support of Chavez's faith. In Rome, a mass was celebrated for the repose of the soul of President Hugo Chavez as a gesture of the love and forgiveness of God and the church towards him. Cardinal Jorge Urosa of Caracas encouraged those present to pray that the Lord will grant him eternal rest and will lead him to the joys of eternal glory. Catholic media assured that Chavez died in the bosom of the church and received spiritual direction and sacraments in his last days. Second, Chavez's funeral occasioned gushing, a gushing mythical and religious accolades. Thousands paid tribute in Caracas as a procession of Chavez's coffin took more than six hours to reach the military academy. Onlookers called for Chavez to be brought to the Pantheon where he had built a mausoleum for Bolivar. Sympathetic dignitaries came to bear the respects and many countries declared periods of official mourning. Most telling, however, was Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad's emotional statements. He described Chavez as a martyr and added, no doubt Chavez will return to earth together with Jesus and the perfect to establish peace, justice, and kindness in the world. State television channel Vive TV reiterated this political eulogy by showing a cartoon of Chavez going to heaven, meeting other political saints such as Eva Perón, Elche, Salvador Allende, and, the, and Venezuelan national heroes, as you can see in, in the picture. The resounding note of the funeral was that Chavez was somehow still alive. Evo Morales exclaimed tearfully in a televised speech, Chavez is still is more alive than ever, as uh, was alluded to earlier as well. A sentiment echoed by mourners crowding the streets of Caracas who shouted, Chavez lives. Therefore, the myth of Chavez, with its Christological intonations, proved successful in overcoming its greatest potential setback, death. Death, death, was not the beginning, but, uh, death was not the end, but only the beginning. 
Viva Chavez has subsequently become the slogan of Chavez's political immortality. Most importantly, Maduro has been able to capitalize on the previously established Chavez Christ typology to advance the Bolivarian Revolution into an uncertain future. Indeed, Maduro seems to have intensified Chavez's public relation to Christ in a bid to mitigate against the inevitable insecurities of the movement without its original charismatic leader. Since assuming the presidency, Maduro has shown himself to be particularly keen on establishing the Chavez myth, especially through this Christological trope. Perhaps most famously, Maduro claims, uh, claimed that Chavez's spirit appeared to him in the form of a small bird to bless his election campaign for the presidency in April 2013. The Chavez bird reappeared in June after Maduro's narrow victory over opposition candidate Enrique Capriles. According to Maduro, the bird communicated, it was happy because I'm working. <laughs> Although not directly Christological, these statements propagated Chavez's perpetuity and current <coughs> spiritual guidance. <laughs> no way. Maduro likewise garnered international attention for his remarks that Chavez influenced Christ in the election of the Argentinian Pope. He claimed Chavez likely convened a celestial meeting in which he told Christ, well, the hour of South America has come and made sure it is the pure people of Christ who govern the church in the world. Undoubtedly, however, Maduro's climactic Christological assertion has been in presenting Chavez as a new Christ. During his presidential campaign in March 2013, Maduro called Chavez Christ, Redeemer of the Poor, nominating himself and all Chavistas as his apostles. He referred to Election Day as Sunday of Resurrection, Sunday of Christ the Redeemer of the Poor of America. In August 2013, at a memorial to mark five months since Chavez's death, Maduro repeated and intensified this equation of Chavez and Christ. He said, Christ the Redeemer was made flesh, was made nerve, was made real in Chavez. Comparisons of Chavez to Christ as the one who came to protect those who have nothing served to further this image of Chavez as the reincarnate Christ. In conclusion, then, one may discern a certain evolution of Chavez Christology through the three aforementioned periods. While the foundational stage established the essential premises of this typology in electing Chavez as the inheritor of Christ's messianic mission to the poor, Chavez's effusive prayers during his illness solidified his Christian credentials. Moreover, the intensification of Christological references prompted by his death paved the way for the perpetuation of Chavez's legacy under his successor Maduro. Significantly, Maduro intensified the relation of Chavez to Christ by blurring any boundary between them. He made them one and the same by deeming Chavez the new Christ, the most recent gesture of the Ar Chavez prayer demonstrates how seriously this divinity has been taken by Chavistas. Scholarship and journalism that critique the political use of religion in the Bolivarian Revolution tend to highlight its problematic nature from a sociological perspective. Many can come and correct me on that statement. Um, often they claim of the abuse of religious imagery for political ends, especially in the indiscriminate tendency to use any and all religious possibilities that might tickle popular fancy. As far as I can discern, however, no theological analysis has been offered that identifies the premises and pitfalls of this religious language, especially when it appears in such an explicitly theological form as comparing Chavez to Christ. Here I will venture a few theological thoughts that provide at least a starting point for this endeavor. From the chronology above, it is possible to discern the fundamental theological premises of a Chavez Christology as portrayed by the proponents of the Bolivarian Revolution. Christ is primarily and exclusively a political savior. Christological concerns, including the importance of faith and works, atonement for sin, or the cross, are ignored for this cause. Similarly, foundational issues in classical Christology, such as the person and work of Christ, his two natures, or his relation to the Trinity, receive no attention. One might, one might therefore compare this Christology to that of liberation theology, a Marxist-inspired rendition popular in Latin America where Christ comes to liberate the poor from their political oppressors. Attendant with this political salvation is an over-realized eschatology. Esch eschatology is the category in which theology concerns itself with the end times. Mostly this tackles questions and interpretations of Christ's return, the apocalypse, and the consequences these have for life on earth in the interim. So within this over-realized eschatology, Chavistas are charged with realizing God's kingdom on earth in a millennial battle against neoliberalism and American imperialism. 
Within this eschatology, Chavez adopts the Christological titles of prophet and priest, who proclaims and sacrifices himself for the inauguration of a new ideal humanity without poverty or misery. Chavez assumes the resurrection properties of Christ by living and influencing politics after his bodily death. The salvation associated with Chavez is for his disciples, who follow his example and fight to realize his vision for the world. This salvation is political and cosmic, as the faithful will receive the reward of heaven along with other revolutionary saints. Christ is emptied of his divinity, but is considered an equally inspired revolutionary along with historic revolutionaries such as Elche and Fidel Castro. <coughs> In the end, Chavez Christology is so diffuse and malleable that it is no systematic Christology at all, which probably comes as no surprise to most of you. Rather, Christological tropes are deployed indiscriminately to infuse the image of Chavez with favorable qualities that will advance the Bolivarian revolution in the media. Yet, these Christological associations with Chavez have become so strong that they have elevated Chavez to Christ-like status. As a theologian, I can only hope that Chavistas will show more respect for Christianity and Christian doctrine and desist from these Christological associations, though I doubt they will. In any event, if the Bolivarian revolution weakens and eventually passes away, then its Christology, like many revolutionary Christologies before it, will not prevail. Otherwise, it is up to Maduro and his possible successors to continue developing this Chavez Christology for the advancement of the revolution into the future.